All right, so as we take a look here at questions 10, 11, and 12, we are going to be factoring by grouping. And you might wonder why I've put a picture of Spock here on the right uh, doing the Vulcan salute. And it's only because, look at what he's doing here, right? With this actual salute, this will help you to remember what to do when you are going to be factoring by grouping because we factor by grouping when we have four terms. So when you have four terms, if you hold up four fingers and then kind of split them right down the middle, just like Spock is doing here, you can see that we have a group of two, don't we? And that's exactly what we're going to do with factoring by grouping. We're going to split our expression right down the middle. So splitting it right down the middle. And then we're going to group the two terms on the left together and the two terms on the right together. So just just kind of like that, uh, the Vulcan salute there. Now, if you are not able to do this with your fingers, don't fret. It's actually a hereditary uh, trait. So if, if you can do it, it's probably because your parents can do it. But if you're not able to, go ahead and ask your parents. See if they're able to, because chances are they're not able to. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, number 10 here and get rid of all that little mess. And just like we said, we're going to go ahead and always isolate your middle term there, or, or sign rather. So isolate that middle sign, and then what that does is split your expression into a left side and a right side. All right, so let's uh, how about we rewrite it out here so we have some more room. So we have SX plus TX plus SM plus TM. All right, and we'll go ahead and isolate that middle sign. All right, so now that we have a left and right side, we're just going to treat the left side like its own separate problem and the right side like its own separate problem. And we want to ask ourselves, what is now in common on the left-hand side? So what is the GCF of the left-hand side of these two terms? Well, let's see. I think x is probably going to be our GCF here, right? Because we have an x in this term, we have an x in this term, so we can go ahead and take out an x. And when we do that, what are we left with? Well, let's see, x times what gives me sx? Well, x times s, right? And then x times what gives me tx? Well, x times t. And so there we have it. All right, and again, we can double check ourselves. X times S is in fact going to give us SX, right? And you might be thinking, well, here it was S came first and X came second. Well, remember, multiplication is commutative, right? You can do either three times five gives you 15 or five times three gives you 15. So it doesn't matter which order you multiply in, you still get the same result. And so that's the, the case here. So X times S is the same as S times X. All right, let's go ahead and now deal with the right side of our equation. And the reason I like isolating my sign is because whatever this sign is, is just going to come down. Uh, and then that way you don't have to worry about, oh, what sign do I pull out of the right-hand side? Well, it doesn't matter. Just whatever sign uh, is in the middle separating your left from your right, bring that down. And now we're going to do the same exact thing like we did here on the left. What is now in common between these two terms? Well, well, it looks like an M is in common, right? So let's go ahead and take out an M. And when we do that, we're going to ask ourselves, M times what gives us SM? Well, M times S, right? And then M times what gives us TM? Well, M times, oops, I wrote T, but I meant to put a plus. Plus T gives us MT, or again, in this case, TM. All right, so now that we've factored each side, the left and the right, you'll notice that what's inside this set of parentheses is identical, and that's important. When you are factoring by grouping, if your parentheses, your sets of parentheses don't match, you've done something wrong. Your sets of parentheses have to match. They have to be identical. All right, so now that we've got identical sets of parentheses, what we are going to do now is take that set of parentheses, and let's go ahead and bring that down. And we can go ahead and now get rid of those. And what's left? Well, what's left is x plus m. x plus m. And so there we have it. We've factored 
our original expression by grouping and it factors into s plus t and x plus m <clears throat> excuse me and now again on a test you could check yourself to make sure that you did in fact uh, do this factoring correctly and you could factor or uh, foil this out rather and make sure that you get back to your original uh, expression all right let's go ahead you know let's go ahead and do that why not so we have uh, s times x well that's going to give us sx s times m is going to give us plus sm and t times x is going to give us or excuse me um oh you know what i wrote a t here and oh that's what i wanted never mind <laughs> uh let's see where were we uh t times x is going to give us a tx and then t times m will give us tm all right so let's see one two three four so we have four terms so that's a good thing let's go ahead and see if we have matching terms well s times x and s times x good sm uh there's our sm good tx tx good tm and tm good deal and again because this is not in the exact same order doesn't mean it's wrong again uh, you can add in any order and still get the same result right 2 plus 3 is 5, just like 3 plus 2 is 5. So again, just like multiplication, it's commutative. It doesn't matter which order you do it, and you'll still get the same result. All right, so there we have it. That was number 11. Let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, excuse me, that was number 10. Let's take a look at number 11 now. So we have 6b plus 6x minus b squared minus bx. All right, we have one, two, three, four terms. So we know we're going to be doing the Vulcan salute. We are factoring by grouping. So let's go ahead and isolate that middle sign. And that breaks our, e, our expression up into a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So now just looking at the left, what's in common on just the left-hand side? Well, hopefully you said six is common. So we'll go ahead and take out that six. And when we do, we are left with B plus X inside, right? Six times B gives us six B. Six times X gives us six X. Now that we have isolated our middle sign, that just comes down. And now we're gonna ask ourselves the same question. What's in common on the uh, right-hand side? Well, hopefully you said B was in common, and we, when we pull out a single B, we're going to be left with B minus X, right? Because B times B gives us B squared, and B times a negative X gives us this negative BX. All right, and now we have a, uh, oh, you know what I must have done here? Let's see. Did I write something wrong? Hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, this should be a plus, shouldn't it? Right? Because negative b times positive x will, in fact, give us a negative bx. All right. So now that our sets of e, uh, parentheses are identical, we know we've factored correctly. So let's go ahead now and bring the set of parentheses down. So our b plus x. And now they go away. And what are we left with? 6 minus b. All right, and there you have it. There is the factored form for number 11. And lastly here, number 12, we'll do 2RA plus 2RB minus 3A minus 3B. All right, again, one, two, three, four terms. So we're gonna factor by grouping. Let's go ahead and isolate this middle sign. And now working with just the left-hand side of our expression, let's see. Looks like 2R is going to be what's common. And when we pull out a 2R, we're going to have A plus B left. Let's bring down this middle sign. And then on the right-hand side, it looks like 3 is going to be what's common. So we'll pull that out. And when we do... We're going to be left with a and then negative 3 times what gives us negative 3b well negative 3 times positive b gives us negative 3b and 2r times a gives us 2ra 2r times b gives us 2rb 
the sets of parentheses match so we'll go ahead and bring that down and when we do they go away and what are we left with 2r minus 3 2r minus 3 and there you have it our factored form for number 12. all right so again just make sure when you have four terms you're going to be factoring by grouping isolate that middle sign and work with just the left hand side and then work with the right hand side make sure that what's in your parentheses matches perfectly they have to be identical once you have that uh, matching set of parentheses pull it down as one single set you can cross them out and then ask yourself all right what am i left with and that becomes the second factor for your expression all right 90 percent of the time these will factor right off the bat meaning once you isolate this middle sign the left hand side will factor nicely the right hand side will factor nicely and you'll be able to do it just like we did in these three examples occasionally you might uh, run into a problem in your homework or maybe uh, on the test uh, depending on who your professor is where you might have to rearrange your expression in order to get something that factors nicely on the left and factors nicely on the right and what i mean by that is you might be given an expression where when you isolate this middle sign and you take a look at the left hand side you go well nothing factors here on the left hand side well that's probably true so it means that you might have to rearrange the order of your terms so you might have to pair this thing with this thing uh, and then pair this thing with this thing on the right hand side in order to get it to group uh, so that it factors nicely. In these three examples, however, we didn't have to do that. They factored nicely right uh, from the, the test itself. So uh, just be on the lookout for that. If you run into a situation where you're not able to factor uh, the left-hand side or the right-hand side, try rearranging your terms and put them in an order that you're able to factor nicely. All right, I'll see you at the next video.